Selected teachings from Ajahn Chah. When you listen to the Dharma, you must open up your heart and compose yourself in the centre. Don't try to accumulate what you hear or make painstaking effort to retain what you hear through memory. Just let the Dharma flow into your heart as it reveals itself and keep yourself continuously open to its flow in the present moment. What is ready to be retained will be so, and it will happen of its own accord, not through any determined effort on your part. Whatever arises in the mind, just watch it. No picking and choosing between good and bad, fast and slow. No me, no you, no self at all. Just what there is. It's very simple. Cling to nothing. On this path, there's only abandoning. We practice to uproot all views stemming from self-importance. Birth, old age, sickness and death. When you see these clearly, you will be able to let go of praise and blame, gain and loss, pleasure and pain, honour and insignificance. Whether liking or disliking arises, just see them all as uncertain. This is how to get close to the Buddha, to get close to the Dharma. Would you get upset at a small crooked tree in the forest? for not being tall and straight, like some of the others. Don't judge other people.
dukkha, or suffering, is the first of the Four Noble Truths. Most people just want to get away from it. In reality, it is through contemplating this suffering that we find wisdom. Our practice is not about trying to achieve anything. It is simply about looking directly at the mind. But you must have patience. With great patience and endurance, gradually you will learn. In the beginning, we hurry to go forward, hurry to go back, and hurry to stop. We keep practicing until we reach the point where it seems that going forward is not it, going back is not it, and stopping is not it either. This is when it is finished. This heart of ours lives in a cage and there's a raging tiger in that cage. When our unruly heart doesn't get what it wants, it makes trouble. Hence the need for the discipline of meditation. Some people get obsessed with states of absorption. Such states can be fun to play around with, but you must know the proper limits. Similar to the way we know the limitations of children compared to adults. Don't just do as you like. Don't indulge your thinking mind. Stop this slavish following. You must constantly go against the stream of ignorance. This is called discipline. When the mind is at one with Dharma, it is beyond the reach of conventions. It is beyond language. We can just speak about the ways and means of realising it. Anything which is troubling you, anything which is irritating you, that is your teacher. Do everything with a mind that lets go. 
Don't accept praise or gain or anything else. If you let go a little, you will have a little peace. If you let go a lot, you will have a lot of peace. If you let go completely, you will have complete peace. Holding on to anger as a personal possession will cause suffering. If anger really belonged to us, it would have to obey us. If it doesn't obey us, that means it's only a deception. Don't fall for it. Whenever the mind is happy or sad, don't fall for it. It's all a deception. There are two kinds of suffering. There is the suffering you run away from, which follows you everywhere. And there is the suffering you face directly, And so, become free. Happiness and suffering do not depend on being poor or rich. They depend on having the right or wrong understanding in our mind. Where does peace arise? Peace arises whenever we let something go. Don't be an arahant. Don't be a bodhisattva. Don't be anything at all. If you are anything at all, you will suffer. Peace is within ourselves, to be found in the same place as agitation and suffering. It is not found in a forest or on a hilltop nor is it given by a teacher. Where you experience suffering, you can also find freedom from suffering. Trying to run away from suffering is actually to run toward it. One person watches a river flow by. If they do not wish it to flow, to change ceaselessly in accord with its nature, they will suffer great pain. Another person understands that the nature of the river is to change constantly, regardless of their likes and dislikes and therefore they do not suffer. To know existence as this flow, empty of lasting pleasure, void of self, 
is to find that which is stable and free of suffering, to find true peace in the world. Where does rain come from? It comes from all the dirty water that evaporates from the earth. Like urine and the water you throw out after washing your feet. Isn't it wonderful how the sky can take that dirty water and change it into pure, clean water? Your mind can do the same with your defilements if you let it. Things are simply the way they are. They don't give us suffering. Like a thorn. Does a sharp thorn give us suffering? No, it's simply a thorn. It doesn't give suffering to anybody. If we step on it, we suffer immediately. Why do we suffer? Because we stepped on it. So the suffering comes from us. The heart is just the heart. Thoughts and feelings are just thoughts and feelings. Let things be just as they are. Looking for peace is like looking for a turtle with a moustache. You won't be able to find it. But when your heart is ready, peace will come looking for you. We practice to learn how to let go not how to increase our holding onto things. Enlightenment appears when you stop wanting anything. Remember, you don't meditate to get anything, but to get rid of things. We do it not with desire, but with letting go. If you want anything, you won't find it.
when sitting in meditation, say, that's not my business, with every thought that comes by. Wisdom is in yourself. Just like a sweet ripe mango is already in a young green one. If your mind is happy, then you are happy anywhere you go. When wisdom awakens within you, you will see truth wherever you look. Truth is all there is. The forest is peaceful. Why aren't you? You hold on to things, causing your confusion. Let nature teach you. Hear the bird's song, then let go. If you know nature, you'll know truth. If you know truth, you'll know nature. I am like a tree in a forest. Birds come to the tree. They sit on its branches and eat its fruits. To the birds, the fruit may be sweet or sour, or whatever. The birds say sweet, or they say sour. But from the tree's point of view, this is just the chattering of birds. We have limited time in our life. Therefore, we should try to teach ourselves, not to teach others. We should conquer ourselves rather than conquer others. Whether coming or going, standing, sitting or lying down, our mind should be focused in this way. If we practice like this and develop mindfulness continuously, wisdom arises quickly and this is a fast way of practice. You are your own teacher. Looking for teachers can't solve your own doubts. Investigate yourself to find the truth. Inside, not outside. Knowing yourself is most important. To define Buddhism without a lot of words and phrases, we can simply say, don't cling or hold on to anything. Harmonize 
with actuality, with things as they are. All religions are like different cars, all moving in the same direction. People who don't see it have no light in their hearts.